excited to addressing you all. Uh, I feel this uh, room is full of potential. I can see a uh, lot of uh, bright. Uh, there's a twinkle on everybody's face, and there's a lot of dream that you know. Yes, we're gonna go out from this room and we're gonna make a lot of difference and impact on our future leaders. So for me, you are the present leaders. So I was uh, addressed. Uh, I was told by Trita and Guru that I need to motivate you guys. So with this all uh, respected dignitaries uh, on this, I think on education. They are the gurus. Okay, I, I cannot I cannot say anything in front of them. But just with my personal experience, um, what what motivated me, what brought me here in front of you, I'll just um, share certain instances which, if you take probably uh, 0.001% of it, I'm sure it's going to make some difference uh, among you. So um, I'm going to talk about. Engage to lead. Anybody tell me uh, what does engage means? Okay, apart from engaged with your fiancé wearing a ring. <laughs> All right. Engagement. Engage means involved with somebody, working very closely with that person. That's engagement, right? Of course, when you get engaged, you know, like this engaged. I'm wearing a ring. Okay, you engage with the spouse, you work very closely with them, both of you create an impact on each other's life. So when I'm saying engage to lead, so I'll just do one exercise. Let me see whether I'm engaging with you guys or not. I know I'm today not vertically challenged because I'm wearing some two inch heels. So those who can uh, see me, can you please raise your hands? Am I still not visible? I can see all the hands up. Good. Thank you very much. You can raise your hand down. Those who can hear me, can you please touch your head? Wonderful. Excellent. Please get it down. Those who can hear me, can you please touch your chin? I said touch your chin, but I checked, touched my cheeks, and all of you followed my actions rather than my words. So that says that your action speaks louder than your words. I'm not saying that words are not important, but as a teacher, as future gurus, you are being watched each and every minute. Whatever you do, however you carry yourself, whatever expressions you are giving, though you are not talking, but you are influencing the people around you. So always, always be aware of it, whatever actions you are doing. For a child, I have twin daughters, let me tell you. For them, their personality in the school is entirely different and what they are in the house is entirely different. Let me tell you. I feel they are very naughty. I feel they just don't listen to me. I tell them to eat these vegetables and food. They'll say, no, we don't like it. The vegetables are not coming inside. But when I go to their PTM, they tell me they are impeccably smart and intelligent and they eat each and everything in the school. I'm like, are you sure? Then I call my children. Hey, come, come, come. This is my child. Are you talking about this child? He said, yes. So see, for children, teachers are the, the thing, okay? The persona whom they look up to. Why do we try to please teachers? Because we don't want them to get upset. They are okay if the mother gets upset, right? But they don't want teachers to get upset. They want to please. My daughter come and say, tomorrow I have to wear red dress. I said, why? No, Miss Sonia likes it. I said, I don't like your color. No, but Miss Sonia likes it. So see, they want to please the teachers. So your one frown, your one raised voice can create a negative impact on the child. So beware. You may be in a bad mood. Your principal would have told you, hey, you are not doing some 30 classes. Probably you would have done 50 classes last week. Have control on yourself when you are dealing with kids. I am learning every day with my twins. I mean, I think you learn from everybody, right? So, so be aware about that. Engage with them. 
rather than because as a teacher you have as a leader okay i handle a team as a leader i have all the responsibility i can say i do this 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 you get me by evening as a teacher you say hey i told you this 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 tomorrow you come prepare i have to take the test everybody's potential is different everybody's inclination is different you need to create that inclination you need to create that enthusiasm with them i'll tell you an example of mine um thank you very much for this elaborate introduction of mine they said i'm a science graduate i have done uh, honors in zoology but after that i took to management why i did honors in science and i am into a management there is no relation i loved my science teacher while i was growing up that created a lot of interest in science for me i hated mathematics my teacher told me to get out of the class when i was in seventh standard because i didn't do homework once i said i will never study maths teacher it's not about inclination towards a subject or probably i didn't know numbers i'm a banker right now i would have done excelled in mathematics but the teacher told me you better get out of the class and don't see me she didn't listen to me why i didn't do homework so engage with listening listen to your students give them an opportunity i know it's really hard to manage 40 students or 50 students in a class It's difficult. I got bogged up with my twins, two children. Let me tell you, it's difficult. But you never know how you are contributing to that child by a smile, by your empathy, by just listening to them. So engage with listening. That's really, really important. That will help you as becoming a beautiful leader. Second important thing is engage with yourself. The beautiful skill is what you know yourself and how well you know yourself. We all know our strengths, right? I mean, I know this. I'm beautiful in the subject. I'm good at teaching. I'm a good orator. Know your weaknesses as well. That will help you in grow faster. That will help you in creating more impact among your students. When you know this is not my forte, but for a child, you're a god. You know everything. Work on it. They look up to you. So know yourself. It's okay to get bored. When you get bored, you develop creativity. I will say, work for yourself. Work for your students also. You don't have to keep them engaged all the time. Let them go. Let them become creative. Let them think how do I have to engage ourselves. You also get bored. and then think what excites you learn learn develop a new skill set be with the next generation right so know yourself engage with yourself and the third most important thing which i personally believe and it has helped me in passing through this hustle bustle of a corporate life with the kids around i and my husband mostly meet each other at the airports Okay, so we are quite an airport couple. Fifteen days we are out. Fifteen days I'm out. Fifteen days he's out. So lean on God. Engage with God. It's very important. It's very important to feel that you know. Make your students also believe in that. I'm sure you must have uh, heard for an excellent example of Tesla, an automatic car. which can drive on its own which can park itself and you know which can change lanes in bilan so basically what a driver can do with a car tesla can do so how does it happen isn't it a brilliant technology yes it is so it has a chip which is connected to the manufacturer and the producer of tesla so if the tesla and the car are not connected it's not going to work so for us our tesla is our god connect with him whenever you can lean on him leave things on him whenever it gives you peace as a professional as personal life going forward you will be juggling with lots and lots of stuff in your life lean on him 
I think you are the best people who, can, who are contributing back to the society. So give back, you will learn more. So on this note, I will say thank you very much. Go out, create an impact on the students, create good leaders. So presently, you are the good leaders, so I bow upon you. Thank you very much.